What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title that we covered about a year ago called Survival Fountain of Youth. Now when we covered it last time, it was just a little itsy bitsy teeny tiny demo. This time around, the developers have fired over the full build that they're planning on uploading for the early access release, which happens in a couple of days. So, we're gonna dive on in and figure out whether or not this game is worth your time. I will do my best to give my first impressions of the game, point out things I like, point out things that I don't like, things that I think could change with regards to quality of life, that kind of stuff, and along the way, hopefully you'll be able to make up your mind and decide whether or not you wanted to drop some ducats on this thing. Uh, if after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, you look down below in the description. That is where you'll find the early access. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, where I frequently go live to play the games in long form that I play here on the channel, just in case I felt like 30 minutes was not enough. So let's play. Uh, what is Survival Fountain of Youth? It is an open world sandbox survival game, a la Stranded Deep or something like Green Hell. In this game, you're like a conquistador or something like that that gets washed up on a desert island. I think like after Cortez or someone betrays you. I, I don't remember what, I don't just specifically remember. I remember though that I had like a Morian and like a pistol. You know, but we're going to give it a go from the top because the developers said when they fired the game over uh, that they've changed a lot of things since I checked it out. So, let's go ahead and do this thing, shall we? This story is inspired by real events. According to historic records, on March 4th, 1513, three ships sailed from Puerto Rico. They were heading to faraway islands and were led by the famous explorer Juan Ponce de Leon. The goal of the expedition was to search for the legendary Fountain of Youth. It all began in Puerto Rico, when Governor Juan Ponce de Leon gave military support to the Chief Gaibana in a war against other tribes. The Spanish soldiers quickly ended the war and restored peace. The Grateful Chief told Ponce de Leon an ancient legend of his people, a legend about Bimini, a hidden island lost in the sea. According to the legend, in the center of Bimini is the Fountain of Youth. Anyone who drinks from it will enjoy long years of health and youth. The chief also gave him an old map, covered with inscriptions in an ancient language. The map showed an uncharted group of islands. The location to search was clear but the inscriptions were still a mystery to uncover. It was Ponce de Leon. Okay. Like, I, I knew it was somebody that wore, like, a big metal hat and had, like, muskets and stuff. The captain believed in the legend and began to prepare an expedition. The best scientists and sailors of the new and old worlds volunteered to join his adventure. A total of three ships sailed off, the Santiago, the Santa Maria, and the San Cristobal. Ponce de Leon was sure that the ancient map would lead them to the fountain and bring them fame, wealth, and eternal youth. The voyage to the islands took an entire month. On the 30th day of the journey, the lookout spotted islands up ahead. They were the islands from the map, the expedition, was just one day from its goal. That was actually kind of a long intro. I didn't expect the video to be that long. I like, I stamp out so many videos and I do this so many times that I always forget things that happened the last time I covered a game like a year ago and I get these strange fragments in my head of like flashing images where I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that happening. But mostly, uh, it all just kind of blends together. My brain is not what it used to be. Alright, so we gotta get ready for the morning assembly. Did I got put on pants or anything, or was I sleeping fully in pants? A sailor's notes! We'll worry about lore and stuff later. Can I open all the door? Can I go into the spooky hallway where there's definitely nothing bad trying to get me? Were we sleeping? Oh, we were. We were sleeping on hammocks. They don't have them stacked up like six deep, though, dude. One time when I was down in San Diego, they had like a naval festival or something like that, and they had a bunch of these old, you know... They had a whole bunch of these old ships there, like the ones that were used in Pirates of the Caribbean, 
and like a bunch of ships that were used in like Master and Commander and stuff. And they were really cramped. Like they they really squeezed some dudes in there. If you've ever been on board that ship, and people are like, "Oh yeah, dude, 120 men were on board," and I was like, "Dude, there's like me and th there's me and like 12 other tourists here, and it feels cramped." For the life of me, I don't know how they got 120 guys on this thing. What is that? Yo, is that a badger? Ow, dude. Ah, dude, get away from me, bro. Some kind of freakish weasel, dude. Get get away from me, you little fuzzy monster. What's wrong with you? Uh, you could, How did this thing even get here? This is not a normal thing to have on a ship. Oh, my God. Apparently, I got to charge up a hit. And then I got to stick him right as he's running at me. Is, like, nobody else on board the ship available to help out with the fact that I'm fighting a little fuzz gremlin? It's, like, only me over here, man. It's a good thing I had this dirk on me, bro. Uh, so take the map. Oh, yeah, there's a map over here. I definitely don't remember getting attacked by a weasel the last time I played this game until much later on. The game waited to attack me with a weasel till probably, like, 30 minutes in last time. Capitan! Almost us! Hmm. No Capitan aquí. All right. Eh, what does this say? I'll just let you pause it if you want to read it. But anyways, he's talking about the fact that he uh, found the Fountain of Youth Water and it healed his wounds and stuff. I need a steel flint to light that. Okay, I don't have a steel flint right now. Is there any, like, sweet treasure in here? Oh, yeah, dude, there's a steel flint right there. Now we can light it up. There we go. Now we can check the expedition logbook. Okay, okay, okay. Not really big on reading. Ooh, that's a sweet sword though, dude. Can I have that sweet sword? Place the map on the map stand. I think I just got knocked out by a fruit cocktail platter. It's kind of hard to say. Survive the shipwreck. Take the grotto plan from the... It's cut off from the table. All right, got the grotto plan. I vaguely remember making it to the grottato the last time we played. I can take two items with me. A pistol with ammo, an iron knife, an iron ax, a coat, a backpack, a fishing rod, an iron flint. Uh, I feel like the axe is probably a good thing to have. I guess I'll take the backpack. I don't like inventory management, so that feels like a winner to me. Jumping through a window. Ooh. I hope I don't cut my stomach on that glass, dude. That seems like it'd be really painful. Giant waves blew up in a split second and crashed into the ship. The sails were torn apart and the ship slammed into the reefs. The sailors jumped from their bunks and tried to save the ship, but it was too late. It was especially too late for that guy in the middle. To my senses on the sandy shore, my memories were gone. I could not even remember my name. But I was alive, and hoped that at least one of my fellow crew members had also escaped. I gotta question how bad your luck must be if you're that center guy in that last screenshot. He managed in, like, in the middle of the ocean, he somehow figured out a way to fall into fire. I'm like, dude, you're in the middle of the ocean. You're in the middle of a rainstorm right now, and somehow you managed to fall headfirst into the one spot that was on fire for, like, the entire ocean. All right, so here we are on the beach. 
Can I take a look around? I feel like the game's purtier than the last time I played it. I feel like they messed with the lighting effects a little bit. We gotta get a green coconut and drink it all up. So I made the executive decision to skip the entire tutorial. Not like I've played through the tutorial, all right? The tutorial has been played, but I'm up in this tree right now and climbing in video games is always super suspect. Anyways, they have added new things to the game. The tutorial was more or less the same as the last time we played through, but the cool thing here is they've added in a couple of new features. They've got these cartography trees around, like you can climb up them and like map things out. Uh, so we basically have free reign to do whatever we want right now. What resources do I have available? Well, I have a spear, and I have this big tree, and there's some kind of giant nest up there that has like 50 eggs in it. So we know we're not going to starve, but I think the development of a little tiny camp would be a good idea with just some bare basic necessities that we're going to require in order to make it through this whole thing. So I say we go ahead and start with that. Uh, the grotto is right over there. I remember it from the demo. What was, why, why did you just exhale? Did you just SBD, bro? People only exhale like that when they just SBD'd, man. You need to be honest with me. We got some tobacco right there. Okay, I'll take some tobacco. We got any other resources around here that might be useful? I need, like, wood and I need sticks. That's kind of where I'm at. So we've got eucalyptus over there. I'm not a koala, so I don't particularly see that being useful right now. Maybe later. I don't know. Frame rate took a little bit of a dive while I'm over here. It appears to be the lighting. Birds of Paradise is one of my favorite flowers. Our yard had those in them when I was a kid. Very popular and trendy at the time, so my parents had some. What do we have going on over here? There's a tree right there that's got some sticks for me. Definitely could use that, so we'll throw that together. I think there's too much foliage around, man. My frame rate's taking a little bit of a dive on me. I'm gonna, like, angle the camera kind of downwards. Sticks are pretty much the main thing that I need here. Just as many of them as I can grab while I'm in the neighborhood. A mahogany tree. Well, it's a shame. You'd make a mighty fine table. Trees over here like, yo, I'd make a mighty fine I'd make a mighty fine tree as well, and I'm already one of those. Why do I hear the sounds of furry ferocious rage over here? Is it a dog? Oh, there's a pig over there. Listen, I've looked around everywhere for where this dog might be at, but the directional sound is being weird, all right? I don't see it around here. It might be, like, underneath us or something, but it's definitely not, like, up in that area. I can hear it making a racket, but, like, I don't really know what to do from here. Ooh, there's a crate. What's in here? Anything good? Oh, a loaf of bread. Yeah, dude, I take a loaf of bread. That sounds good. The game does seem to track... That's fine. I can cut down that big chunk right there. That's cool. The game does seem to track your sun exposure, which is kind of an interesting stat to track. You can see it up in the top left. I'm probably going to have to... Ooh, a big stone? Yeah, I'll take a, a massive stone. Not just a normal stone, a massive one. Let me see if I can... Yeah, there we go. I got us dinner, too. See, this wasn't a non-productive... Oh, there's more of them over here. Well, let me see if I can get a couple more crabs for dinner. I'm actually not, like, a big crab guy IRL, but, like, you know, when you're in a situation, you do what you gotta do. Oh, we leveled up! Was that a thing the last time we played the game? Aw, oh, dude, we get actual, like, level ups and stuff. That's cool. So we do various tasks, and that will give us perk points. And then with the perk points, we can get, like, new things. Okay, a tusk-tipped harpoon. Gotcha. Primitive fishing rod. That, to me, feels like a solid idea. Uh, so let's see here. To learn this blueprint, you must study these resources. There's like a long stick, there's a bone, and there's a tendon thread. All right. It looks like we have to do some kind of study in order to unlock new things that we can craft too. So that might be fun to investigate a little bit. I'm going to head back to camp. I think it's underneath this tree over here. I think we actually just did like a very small loop back from the tree. Yeah, there's our bed right there. I got a campfire over here too. Let's start this thing up, man. I don't know if I want to put like that much wood in there. Yeah, give me like eight hours. That's good. That's good. We'll light a fire real quick. We failed to ignite the fire. Feels bad. Try again. 
Once more, bro. Wow, you're just not good at the... Oh, it's a 20% chance. That actually explains a great deal. Come on. You go get... Hey, we got 30% now. You, I knew you could do it, dude. I believed in you so hard. How many hours of fire did I waste here? Did I waste, like, a lot of hours of fire? Oh, no, I still have, like, eight hours left. That's true. It wasn't lit before, so why would I lose that? We got a tobacco compress. It treats a sunburn, a severe burn, an infected burn. Also protects from disease progression. Okay, maybe I should make one, then. It looks like I need a wide leaf, though, and I don't have a wide leaf. We'll grab one of those. Yup, couple of Krabby Patties ready to rock. I got my coconut water over here. Fill up and hydrate. There we go. Everything I'm eating right now has a chance to make me sick, which kind of concerns me. Oh, I've also got a bread. I could just knock that out real quick. Yeah, knock out the bread. That's all good. Uh, we're kind of sleepy right now. I don't know what time it is, but... Maybe we just kind of, like, throw six hours at the wall? Yeah, it looks like we woke up at, like, a reasonable time. And it looks like I no longer have a stummy ache, dude. My stummies is no longer hurting. That's good. Let's go find, like, a big wide leaf. They're probably talking about a banana leaf, and that'll let me make a... Well, actually, I was only making the tobacco compress to fix one of my status effects, so I guess I don't really need to. Lighting effects on point. Shadows are looking pretty good. I kind of want to explore. Like, I've got the map cleared out like this right here. So there's a lot of place to go to. Maybe it was a short-eared dog that I was hearing. It was making, like, a barking noise. I don't know, dude. I thought maybe there's a puppy on the island. Like, this is about to be like Fable 2. And I was about to have a pet dog of friendship. I remember this part from the demo, dude. I see something in the brush over there. Yeah, bro. This is the part where I got attacked by a weasel again. I got weaselificated. Yeah, get him, crab. Help me out, comrade crab. Do your thing, bro. I don't think the crab's gonna fight him. It seems kind of hostile. It does not seem friendly. That's fair. That's fair. If you don't want to be friendly, that's your prerogative, dude. Like, I'm not gonna try to force you. Like, I'm not the kind of person that just, like, needs you to like me. You know what I mean? Like, do, do your thing, man. Do your thing. Here's the grotto. We found it. I remembered it being somewhere over here, so I didn't think there was any doubt. But let's just go ahead and advance the storyline. Oh, there's scorpions around here, man. Yeah, get out of here. Ooh, I can have a scorpion's carcass, huh? There we go. I'll get that one right there, too. Oh, I got him with a critical hit? Dude, I'm the champion of spear fighting. Maybe we just live inside this cave from here on out. Like, this seems like... I mean, there's there's a lot of stalactites and stalagmites, but, like, a piece of jatoba gum? What the hell is jatoba gum? I have no idea what that is. Living water. I'm leaving this bottle of living water so that the person that finds this can restore their health if the ship wrecks. Good luck to you, friend. Our captain, Juan Ponce de Leon, also survived the shipwreck. Sea currents brought him to this same island just a bit earlier before my awakening. He located the grotto and made it his temporary shelter. Then he started to act quickly and decisively. After building up the temporary camp, the captain began to explore the island. He named it the Island of Hope. During another trip, he heard distant cannon shots. It was a signal from one of our ships. The captain left this note, then hurriedly packed up and sailed toward the sound of the cannon fire. He was in a rush to help his crew. Running quickly, he forgot his spyglass on the other side of the island. If I find it, I will be able to look around the island. And also potentially be able to start a fire a lot easier if you can get that lens out of there. I'll let you guys pause that and see it, just in case you wanted to read it. But I'm trying to maintain some momentum here 
as we move forward. It's a little dark. I probably should have thought about bringing a torch or something. What's this pile of scrap got for me? Oh, it's got a bone? Yeah. Wait, no tools selected. There should definitely be, like, I got, like, axes and stuff, bro. Can I not harvest this with an axe? I guess it wants me to have the stone cutter. Okay. I'll just do that. There's the bone. We don't have much inventory space left. We're going to have to figure out some kind of storage in here. What is this? All right, so we've got the Isla de Esperanza, and then we've got the Santiago over there. I was not destined to complete a map of the local seas, but it may come in handy to find the place where the Santiago sunk. Not far from this island. Perhaps there's still something useful there. Ponce de Leon. Okay, sounds like a plan. I don't recall if there was anything back in this kit. It goes pretty far back. I feel like I remember there wasn't anything in here. Like, you went all the way back, and then it just came out, like, inland somewhere. Let me go look. Yeah, that was exactly right. I felt like I remembered some mental image of, like, coming out of a cave the last time I checked this out. But it does look like we can build foundations, and we can get busy with, like, a raft and some other stuff. But we need to make, oh, liana vines. I know those. Okay, and then we need to process a hide. So it looks like there's going to be a bit of a process to us getting this done. We do have some hats and some capes and things we can make to maybe armor us a little bit against the environment. There's a portable box we can build right there. I think I'd like to make a box out of branches and just place one of these in here so that I know where all my stuff is at. I'll probably try to put down some kind of light sources and things too. There we go. I'll probably try to place some resources and stuff like some torches and things around, like tiki torches or something, so that we can see. So there is our island right there. Grotto's there. We have to follow all the way back, and it looks like maybe he's left some caches around. Okay. Fair enough. All right, well, I stashed all my crap inside the crate. There is a full base building system, though. Like, you can build foundations and things of that nature, too. So we're not necessarily, like, confined to the cave. There's, like, foundations and walls and stuff like that that we can build. Looks like we can hollow out logs and do some of that stuff as well. Is that more puffball mushrooms? I'll leave those where... What was that? Aw, oh, dude. Did you follow me over here, you little turd? Yeah, you better run for it. That's what I thought. You better bounce on out, look upon me in despair, for I am man. Man has come to the island, and man does not fear you, tiny hairy devil. Looks like there's something over here by this whale. An ancient hunting drawing. Hunting process is depicted here. Natives crouch and sneak up on animals, and it seems the animals do not hear them. They approach from behind and hide behind stones and things. Okay. I have learned things about proper hunting technique. Can I do any type of scrimshaw or anything with them bones? Probably not. I'm just going to go on a little bit of like a resource hunt. We'll wander around the island for a little bit and see what we see around here. That looks like a cartography tree right there. So we might be able to climb that guy and map out this area with some charcoal. Uh, you can collect charcoal from your campfire. Oh, a tortuga, dude. You don't want to be friends with me? I didn't know that... I didn't know turtles made noises, man. That was really unpleasant. I feel bad about myself now. So I can get a turtle shell, and I can get a raw meat. Yeah, get all of it. I mean... Waste not, want not. That's something that we can cook tonight and that we could actually eat and then we'll just survive off of maybe coconut water for our fluids. Like, I think that our energy is a little tiny bit low, but how busted up is my spear, by the way? It's not in great shape. Could be better. Looks like there's another little furry devil over here, dude. I don't want to mess with that thing. Is that? It looks like there's a grave or something down here. Listen, I'm not going to come near you. 
All right. I'm going to swing real wide because I need to go through this. I need to go through this crevasse. And you're like in the way. You're blocking it with your big fat fuzzy butt. All right. I don't want to fight you. I don't want the smoke. I'm not hungry. I already have enough turtle meat to last me for a couple of days. Sound like... Oh, it's a snake! Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, that's a snake. Forget you, buddy. Fight me, you jerk. You can get dropped. I can take his little rattler? Yeah, take his little rattler. I don't know if it's useful, but I'll take it. Might be useful at some point. I want to get up there and map the island. Was that a nettle? If you cut down a nettle, it does not grow back. Does it just like... That's why I kept... I just wanted to check. Just wanted to check. Some stinging nettles, dude. We got those down in the creek where I live, too. Down by the water, like them little water nettles that get on down in there. And then you got the Scottish nettles. So many different types of nettles and things that try to sting you out in nature. I am noticing, like, considerable performance drops in certain areas. Like, it feels like certain maps, like, you've got, like, a silky smooth frame rate. And then it feels like on other areas of the map, it definitely, like, tanks by a good 20 or 30 frames per second. It's still playable. It goes down from, like, an 80 down to, like, a 40. You know what I mean? But it is there, and it is perceptible. Maybe that's not a tree that I can scout with. A lot of tall grass over here that kind of worries me. I don't like being in the tall grass when I got no shoes or nothing. Some kind of ruin over here with like a big stone head. It's kind of interesting. The music just got all thumpy and drummy on me too. A bird's nest. Oh! Okay, yeah, bird didn't like that. Bird not a fan. Oh, did I get him? Nice, dude! I got him in the head, apparently. A harpy? I just thought it was just like a pissed off eagle, dude. I didn't know I was out here killing fanciful creatures and we were playing like Path of Exile. All right, we'll get the worms, get the feathers, get the whole thing, man. Use the whole buffalo while we can. Uh, we've got level one gathering and we're losing the sunlight, so I'm gonna head back to camp. My way back home, I actually noticed there's like a mural or something over here on this big stone. So I figured we'd take a look at it and see Maybe it's a fishing spot marked by the natives. Oh yeah, it is. It's a fishing spot. So we got a fishing spot right by our base too. Okay. I don't have a rod, but if I get around to making one, definitely knock that out. I think for the rod we needed a few more things, but for now, are there any coconuts? Yeah, there's a few of those loose coconuts that have been rattling around. I'll grab them real fast. These ones are all ripe, though. I don't know if they're going to give me enough water. Can I throw a spear up into one of these trees and, like, knock down a coconut? Is that a thing I can do? Let me see if it works. Um. Wow, my man's got a cannon of an arm. He threw that thing into orbit. Good lord. This has turned into every time I tried to do archery when I was a kid. I've lost my arrow inside the dirt and I can't find it now. We'll find it in the morning, dude. It's too dark. We lost the sunlight. We gotta go inside and we gotta we gotta prepare. Like, it's probably gonna take me a couple hours to get a fire up and running because apparently I really suck at it. Oh, this time I have tinder, though. Although the tinder doesn't really seem to help altogether that much. Oh, the tinder lowers the amount of time it takes you to attempt. Add fuel first. That's true. That's true. I could probably do that. You have been attacked by a pest. These areas are mostly jungles, caves, and swamps. Hey, get off me, bro! I will... Yeah, I will fist fight you, dude! These hands are rated E for everybody. You can catch them right now. And I lost my durability. Man. I have never been so offended in my life. Uh, I guess we roast up some turtle. And hopefully the roasty toasting of turtle 
helps out with our overall hunger pangs. Roasty toasty turtles. Oh yeah, I could fry some eggs too. What is that? Processed scorpion venom. Oh, it gets rid of our poisoning. Okay. I could live with that. Let's eat one of you. A 3% chance to indigest. Well, hopefully I'm on the money. And then you, we need to bust open for some coconut water. That'll work for now. That's just coconut flesh from what I remember, but it does give three water. And three water is better than what we have right now, so we'll just hit it all while we're here. And then we'll eat the meat in the morning, probably. I need to make a new fire starter. I'm going through mine pretty quickly. Oh, there's another one over here. Never mind. We're good. We are good. I do like the way that it directly links you to the relevant blueprints for any given item. That's like a nice little quality of life type deal. I need to store up some of my stuff over here. Oh, I needed to make another bed too, huh? I wonder if I can get stung by a scorpion while I sleep. Oh, that would be... That would suck. I wonder if the scorpion... I don't know if we can make a base in here. I'm going to give it a try. But I'm not going to hope for, like, big wins here. Like, if I get bit by something, I guess I get bit by something. Oh, we're pretty tired, actually. I guess I'll sleep till, like, noonish. Feels like a bit of a waste of resources, but I gotta go find a big stick. I don't remember what trees had the big stick, but I gotta look for my spear, and if I can't find my spear, I gotta make a big stick. Well, I saw it fall around here somewhere. But it feels really unlikely to me that I'm going to find it in the underbrush. So we may be at the mercy of long, sticked trees from here on in. Let's try not to get ourselves into any conflict. I mean, I guess the worst case scenario is I do have, like, a battle axe. Like, that's actually, like, a boarding axe. So that's a pretty dope axe right there for fighting with. If anything really tries to mess me up, you know, I'll give him the... I'll give him one of those right there, you know what I mean? Just give him a little... Hachow! Give him one of those little Aikido slashes, but, like, I'm going to try to stay out of trouble. I don't know if the long sticks came from these little trees over here or if they came from, like, bigger trees. I guess I will interact with all the trees until I find what I need. So let's do a little bit of foraging here. Got, like, a stump. That's probably not that helpful. What you got over here? Uh, Yeah, so that's the tree we're looking for right there that has the long sticks on it. Unfortunately, that looks like it might be one of the only ones. Oh, no, that one's got long sticks, man. Let me get them. The longest sticks in the world. Oh, no, I got sunburned. Oh, no, dude. Now I'm all, now I'm all pink and spicy. Feels bad. Well, I need to track down big banana leaves, and those look like them right there. We'll try to make some clothing that mayhaps will protect us from the overbearing death rays of the sky orb. There's some biggins right there. We'll grab those. There's some biggins right there. We'll grab those. I don't know how many. Oh, I gotta go back to the shade. I'm about to get a sunburn. I mean, it feels like I'll just run into the, I'll run into the thicket here. Oh, there we go. All better, dude. Apparently, the sun's pretty intense right now. I think we might be in, like, the hottest part of the day. Can I craft anything good? Like some pants or something. Yeah, I can make, like, a little Peter Pan hat. And it looks like I can make myself, like, a little muumuu or something. A little grass skirt. I'll take it. Some zapatos, dude. Okay, we got, we got, we got like, some shoebies in here. The question is, how hard is it going to be to manufacture socks that we can wear with these bad boys? Because I'm about, I'm about the fashion out here. Oh, it already put it on. Nice. So we get 25% sun protection. We have a lowered wound chance. We have a lowered poisoning chance. Hat. So we got like 50% sun protection. It's not perfect, but it works. Let's go get the rest of these big fat leaves then, dude. I'm trying not to have my willy in the wind any longer. 
a bit of an unnerving feeling, just having everything flap in the breeze, you know? Especially considering this entire island has been filled with things that go like, and like try to launch themselves at you. Like, I, I had to knife fight a weasel, all right? This is a tough neighborhood. I think we might have to take this fool out. He's looking at me kind of unpleasant, all right? I didn't like it. It made me feel nervous. I'm gonna go ahead and pick him up real fast. I can just eat him raw? Like I can just take a big bite out of a squirrel? I don't know, man. That seems a little rugged to me. I think we're gonna use the satellite camp tonight just because I don't want to walk all the way back to the grotto. But if I can get some leaves up off these trees, like that'd be good too. I gotta figure out how we clean these dogs, but I don't really have that many stones left. Like, I was looking for rock piles for a little while, but the rocks are kind of hard to come by in this game. I was thinking maybe I could use one of the big boulders and bust it up or something, but it's kind of hard to say. Uh, I'm just going to rest for a couple of hours. Yeah, that got us up a little bit earlier. How do I clean these squirrels? Uh, it looks like I can make a roasted short-eared dog. That sounds acceptable. Yeah, let's get a fire going first thing in the morning. Throwing fire on in there. All right. Okay, okay. I'm a failure. I continue to be a failure. I broke my fire starter. Now my heart is full of depression. Can I fix this? Oh, cool. There's a repair system in the game. Nice. Uh, I don't mind weapon durability as long as you give me the ability to repair my stuff. Uh, but I hate it when games just make your stuff flatly break and despawn when it gets to the end, and then you're, like, constantly recreating the same objects over and over and over again. That's a level of tedium that I've never been on board for. Let's go ahead and craft both these short-eared dogs. Good. And we are getting XP for, like, all these things that we're doing. So, like, you actually level up, and you get, like, these little perks and things over here. So, like, at concentration level 1, level 2, level 3... And it looks like we can't go much further than that. But there's also, like, attributes and stuff. So you've got, like, crafting levels. You've got everything from gathering levels to medicine levels to throwing levels. And they all do stuff. Like, they, they level up and make you better at those particular activities. So it looks like cooking makes our nutrition gleaned from anything we eat or drink go up. It's nice. I'll take it. Eat a couple squirrels. Probably finish off that. Yeah, just to clear out the inventory space, I'll probably eat that bad boy right there, too. We need to track down for ourselves some green coconuts. Good stuff. Uh, that right there. Oh, we can't repair that. Okay, so we'll just disassemble that guy. And then we've got our rocks still. Can I get, like, a better cutter? Oh, a stone saw. You can make it out of... Uh, the massive stone. Okay, I've got one of those back at base. We'll play around with that in a minute. An improved stone axe. Oh, I can learn to make axe blades, like the actual head of the axe. Okay, fair enough. These little stone knives are not going to last long, but I'll, I'll take them. Oh, yeah, and we got those two coconuts we got to process, too. Give me that coconut water. There we go. All of our vitals are looking great. Uh, I think our best plan from here is to head back down the beach where I came from and just, like, what I would do in this situation survival-wise if I had charcoal and, like, a piece of paper or a piece of cloth and I had my food and I had my water taken care of, I would walk the edge of the island first all the way around the outside and back just to see how big the place was while slowly just jotting notes about points of interest. Basically, I would just make a circle on a piece of paper and, like, I would count my paces and I'd just put little X's on with a little note next to them, things I found along the shore. Feels like a strong play just to acclimate. Oh, yeah, dude, I can also make my Moo Moo if I get a few more narrow leaves. Yay! It's Moo Moo in time, dude. Let's do it. Cool. I've got a leaf cape now. It makes me even more protected from the sun. One day, I shall have shoes. And on that day, 
I shall be the most fantastical of the abandoned island survivors. And in fact, I believe that it is time to become the most fantastical of the island survivors. You're... Got those Island Air Force Ones on, dude? Look at those. Those are clean right there. Somebody scuffs them. We're about to have a problem. Oh, when the sun goes behind a cloud, you don't get sunburns anymore. That's crazy, dude. Is that actually what happened here? I gotta wait for the sun to come back out now. And see if the, the buff thing comes back. It went away on my screen right when the sun went behind a cloud. So I thought maybe the clouds did it. And I was like, dude, how would they even get the skybox to do that? That's wild. Like, I started thinking about it, but I don't think that's how it works. I think it was just a coincidence. Like, I think my shirt made it so that I have 100% sun coverage. Yeah, and it just happened to disappear from my UI right as a cloud flew over and everything, like, grayed out. Womp womp. So now that we're down further than we've been so far, we're going to see if any points of interest crop up down here at the end, and then we'll call it a day. My initial thoughts about the game are that everything feels pretty good. From the attacking to the crafting system, which is sort of unique. Like, it reminds me there was a Game Boy game where you had to, like, survive on an island. Not like the original Game Boy, but, like, I don't remember if it was, like, the DS or what. Probably the DS. It was, like, a Game Boy DS game where you had to survive on a desert island and each of your activities took, like, a certain amount of time. It was called, like, Endless Blue or something like that. It's been a really long time. The crafting system kind of reminds me of that. I would have liked to have seen something more immersive, like actually, you know, seeing the animations for pulling the husk off of a coconut and all that kind of stuff, but I realize that probably raises the budget on a game by quite a lot. The only worrying thing that I've seen so far while I'm playing in this little budget survival game, uh, is the performance. There have been considerable performance dips in certain areas for what seems like no reason at all. I think it has something to do maybe with the sharpness of the way that the foliage is being rendered because it seems to happen more frequently in areas that have very thick trees or very thick holler out there, but like, it's kind of hard to say. But one thing I can say for sure is the one thing I noticed here that is a problem are the performance dips. Now, I don't know if that's going to be related directly to my hardware or if that's going to be a universal thing that affects everybody else. But once I get inland a ways and there starts being lots of trees, uh, I definitely get like a fat performance dip. It's still playable, so it doesn't drop down to like slideshow, but it's definitely a drop from like 90 frames down to like 25-ish, 28-ish. Like, it is a visually noticeable drop, and so that's one of those things that, on high settings, this game is not that wild and crazy looking in terms of, like, graphical fidelity. It's a good looking game, but, like, there's other games that look better that run smoother in more cluttered environments. And so, oh, look at that! They got themselves an old-fashioned Los Angeles billboard over here, dude. They got, they got like a big old billboard just being like, hey, swing on through Mel's Diner. We've got eggs, we've got burgers, we've got fries, we've got Coke, we've got shakes. Oh, is that guy milking a frog? I think that guy's milking a frog in a thong, dude. Oh, I got a perk point? Sweet, dude. Oh, so you get a perk point for each thing you discover, not... Okay, but the perk points are used in here, and you can decide what perk you want to unlock. I would say, I mean, I'd probably be stronger against disease and weather, I suppose. That sounds all right to me. So I guess as we find, like, leftover things from the natives, we'll get perk points because we're, like, learning from their diagrams. Oh, those guys have, like, a little go-kart, and they're body-checking that guy off a cliff. This guy's eating a killer hot dog right here. Like, look, dude, my man's ready. He's like, it's chili dog time. Oh yeah. What's up on top of this little, like, dais up here? What is this? Oh, no. This is not the place we want to be. Mm-mm. Nope. Something bad happens over here. A piece of the native map. You've learned a new way to open the next region. Oh, yeah, look at there. There's, like, four different zones that you can go to, and you've got to kind of collect-a-thon it up over here before you can go to new zones and move around. And then there's, like, sub-zones. You do get boats and stuff in this game. I've seen clips of people, like, sailing ships 
like big frigates and things like that. So you do get some kind of like naval reinforcement at some point where you get to pilot like a big old craft and like sail around where you want to go. And so I don't know if it's going to be like autopilot, like you just kind of go to the edge of the map and it teleports you there, or if you're actually going to be able to like high seas sail your way on out there. I'd be curious to find out though. Huh. Yeah. Interesting little title. Performance issues. That's the major thing that jumped out at me. Inside the settings, what can we play around with? Graphics? Actually, quite a few things to fiddle around with here. Uh, the one that I am looking for, however, though, is the ability to change the FOV. As far as I can tell, I do not see an FOV adjust available. I've gone through all the tabs. We do have all the stuff here that I look for, though. Lots of customization in the settings, and they haven't reduced it all down into a post-processing tab. Uh, we've got a sound mixer. We've got fully rekey bindable controls, even brightness controls on in there. Uh, they get an FOV controller slapped on in here, and they'll be in good shape. Uh, some people get motion sick from not being able to adjust the default FOV in a game like this. And it does appear to have a fairly tight FOV from what I'm seeing on screen right now. It could definitely afford to be many degrees wider. Like, I'd probably widen it by 15 or 20 if it was me personally. But no FOV sliders. So performance issues, no FOV adjustment. Those are the two things that in this little video, off the top of my head, I see are potentially problems. Uh, but other than that, I would have to play quite a bit more. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games. Today, we were checking out Fountain of Youth. Tomorrow, it'll be something else. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I think that's about all I've got for right now. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off that old indie skillet.